Hey what's up guys Abhi here and welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna talk about this brand new microphone by Fine Fine which is the Tank 3. This is a dynamic microphone so it pretty much eliminates a lot of your background noise and thus is perfect for podcasting. I've been using this for the past couple of weeks as my main mic. This was the main microphone that I used in my last video and everybody seems to like it and that pretty much says all about it. This comes in a price point of 120 bucks Canadian or about $80 US which is a very solid price point for such an amazing microphone. So let's start talking about the overall build. This is a full metal build and has a really solid solid construction and it weighs about 700 grams so you know that it is built like a tank. This feels super premium and doesn't hurt the fact that it looks good on cam which is a very major deal for podcasts or even if you're streaming this is not meant for streaming but even if you use this this is gonna look absolutely stellar on your live cam. Now taking a look at the overall mic, we have three physical buttons. So first of all, just below the branding, we have the mute switch. Also, it has an LED indicator to tell you if it's muted or not. And as you can see right now, it's green. So you can see that it is recording. And if I just press, so when you press it, it turns red, letting you know that now it is on mute. The only caveat to this is that it only works when you're plugged in via USB and not with the XLR input. And that is pretty much the same case with the other physical buttons. We have two here. First one is the microphone gain and the second one is the headphone output. So hands down, the best part about this microphone is that it has dual inputs and it works simultaneously with both of them. So in case if you want to use the XLR and USB input, at the same time it freaking does so you always have that backup in case if you want to plug in the type c into one computer and use the xlr input to a different system so in my testing both sound really similar and you're not sacrificing on quality with the fact that you're using one input over other and in case if you want to have a look at all the detailed specifications they should be on the screen right now so as i mentioned earlier this is a dynamic microphone mainly suited for podcast and vocals all sort of that recording stuff so it pretty much cancels out a lot of background noise on its own and alongside with that this has a cardioid record pattern which is pretty much the standard for such kind of microphones as you can see right now i'm not using any sort of pop filter on this and it still does a very good job eliminating all those plosive noises and yeah you can manage to make it pick up all those plosive noises if you're just straight up throwing peas into this microphone <laughs> but apart from that if you're even a little off angle it pretty much eliminates all those plosive sounds so let me just do a quick test for you all these parrots punching into the thin air with pumps all around i don't know if that sentence makes any sense but yeah i hope that gives you a good idea of how this eliminates the plausive sounds and if not you're the judge and i'm sure it did a very good job at that because of this metal mesh which pretty much eliminates all the pops as i mentioned this comes in at 700 grams which is surprisingly lighter than my pod mic which is about 930 grams so it also makes it easier to mount it on different boom arms and the one i'm using right here is also by fine fine this is their low profile arm i absolutely love this and this is super sturdy fully built out of metal and can easily manage the weight of this and also even my pod mic if i tap on the table and the boom arm you can see how much noise it picks up That should give you a good idea of how you need to take care of the mic. So before that, I was using the Rode Pod mic, which only has an XLR input. So I had to use like an interface for it. So using type C for this is just an absolute lifesaver in case if I want to just plug it in my MacBook and get some recordings done. Also, this is a lot heavier. I'll do a quick comparison of both and you can be the judge yourself. So this is a recording sample from Rode PodMic which is plugged into the UM1 interface, Pops and Pickles. So talking about the overall pros and cons, I am really surprised how good this microphone is for the price. As the build quality you get in this is really solid, the headphone monitoring output has no hiss whatsoever so it makes monitoring the audio very easy. The sound profile is a little bit mid-forward and not super neutral 
but that pretty much makes sense since this is tuned as a podcast microphone and you can always manage it to your liking while processing it in post. Another big pro that I really like is having the physical controls, the microphone gain knob and the headphone output alongside with that microphone mute switch which is really handy at points. And last but not the least, you don't really need a pop filter for this which saves you a couple of extra bucks can't be really all flowers and petals. So one major con that I would like to highlight is it has a little bit of self noise and that is very easy to get rid of with any sort of basic noise reduction software. So I would say that is like a little nitpick from my side but you should know about it and apart from that this is an absolute amazing microphone for the price would totally recommend it and in case if you want to get one for yourself the amazon links will be in the description box down below also let me know in the comment section down below what are your thoughts on this budget microphone built like a tank and thus the name tank 3 stands for itself i hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did you know what to do drop a like and subscribe the channel for more such awesome content and i'll see you guys in the next one peace